All right, friends, grab your Santa hat, the mistletoe, the twinkling lights, because we are about to get festive as Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Ruskies and Reads. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm very glad that you are here. Today, I'm going to be discussing some of the holiday romances that are coming out for the 2023 holiday season. So in the new release video that I did for September new releases, I included at the very end a handful of holiday romances that were coming out in September. And I realized that there are plenty of holiday romances that are coming out before the end of this year that y'all might like to know about. And I didn't want to really include them in just like new release videos because there are typically plenty of other new releases that I'm trying to talk about in those videos. So I thought that I would do a dedicated new release video on the holiday romances. I am going to go ahead and discuss in more detail some of the romances that I briefly mentioned at the end of that September new release video because I didn't actually talk about them at all. And then I'm going to talk to you about several other holiday romances that have already come out or are coming out before the end of this year. So all of these holiday romances have either already come out in September or they are coming out in October or November. And as usual, I'm just going to go ahead and briefly read the blurbs or synopses of these stories to give you an idea of what they are about so you can make the decision on whether or not you want to add them to your TBR but of course we all know these are holiday romances and they are all probably going to be very similar or end up the same but I will still give you a brief idea of what the overall plot of the stories are supposed to be. All right we are going to start with Wrapped with a Bow by Lily Vale. This is one that is coming out at the end of September on the 26th. This says in its heyday Piney Peaks and its beloved Christmas house were made famous by sleigh bells a romantic holiday movie. 50 years later the small town is ready for a new love story. As a successful film liaison Alicia Rowe has her heart set on one thing and one thing only putting her hometown back on the map so when she gets the chance to secure a sequel to Sleigh Bells she's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure everything goes smoothly unfortunately that includes claiming to have already secured permission to film at the historic Christmas house permission she was very much denied by the gorgeous new owner Bess Hollins is only back in Piney Peaks long enough to sell the house he inherited from his great aunt the holidays have always been tough for Bess and it's not any easier when he's distracted by memories of a Christmas long long ago and the undeniable charm of neighbor Alicia ready to return home to New York as quickly as possible he has no plan to put down roots or fall in love, even if Alicia ravels his hesitation like a bad Christmas sweater. There's no question the two are opposites in every way. Bess is unquestionably frosty. Alicia is brimming with warmth. He doesn't do commitment. She never runs from a challenge. But as the two grow closer, they quickly realize that the growing spark between them may just be what the season calls for. So that sounds like it's going to be a grumpy sunshine Christmas romance. It actually sounds very, very sweet. I love a good grumpy sunshine romance. This one is certainly on my radar for a holiday romance I might like to pick up. Another one that comes out on the 26th of September is Faking Christmas by Carrie Winfrey. I have heard of this author in the past. I believe she's the one that wrote Waiting for Tom Hanks. I've never read anything by her, but she is coming out with a Christmas romance. It says Laurel Grant works as the social media manager for Buckeye State of Mind, an Ohio tourism magazine and website. She is most definitely not an owner of a farm, but one tiny misunderstanding leads her boss Gilbert to think she owns her twin sister Holly's farm just outside of Columbus. Laurel only handles the social media for the farm, but she's happy to keep her little white leg going if it means not getting fired. And keeping it going, she must when Gilbert, recently dumped by his wife, invites himself over for the farm's big holiday dinner as advertised on Meadow Rise Farms Instagram thanks to Laurel herself. Laurel immediately goes into panic mode to figure out how she can trick Gilbert into thinking she's basically the Martha Stewart of rural Ohio and keep her job in the process. Laurel and Holly come up with a plan. All Laurel has to do is pretend to own the farm for one dinner but when Laurel shows up at the farm an unwelcome guest is there. Max Beckett her nemesis since Holly's wedding. The annoyingly attractive man she hates will be posing as Laurel's husband just for the evening but when a snowstorm traps them all for the entire weekend Laurel is going to have to figure out how to survive with her job and dignity intact whatever the case this promises to be the most eventful Christmas in ages so there's definitely a lot going on in there you have a lot of lies a lot of deceit you have fake dating there's twin sisters I'm surprised that they're actually not swapping places because what else could you possibly add to this this is not really one that sounds like it's up my alley but if you have read and enjoyed Carrie Winfrey in the past or if this sounds interesting to you be on the lookout for this holiday release coming out on the 26th of September on the 23rd of September we have three holidays and a wedding by Uzma Jalaluddin and Marissa Stapley as strangers and seatmates Miriam Aziz and Anna Gibson fly to Toronto over the holidays. Mary Ann to her sister's impromptu wedding and Anna to meet her boyfriend's wealthy family for the first time. Neither expect that severe turbulence will scare them into confessing their deepest hopes and fears to one another. At least they'll never see each other again. And the love of Mariam's life, Saif, wasn't sitting two rows behind them, hearing it all. An emergency landing finds Anna, Saif, Mary Ann, and her sister's entire bridal party snowbound at the Corky Snowfalls Inn in a picture-perfect town where fate has Anna's actor crush filming a holiday romance. As Mary Ann finds the courage to open her heart to Saif and Anna feels the magic of being snowbound with an unexpected new 
new love. Both women soon realize there's no place they'd rather be for the holidays. Again, another cute, sweet, heartwarming holiday romance. I don't think I have to keep saying that these are going to be cute, sweet, fun, and heartwarming because aren't all holiday romances. But again, this one comes out on September 23rd if you are interested. All right, sorry if the angle has changed, the lighting has changed. My mother called me in the middle of filming and I don't know where I left off or what I was even doing. So we're just gonna jump right back in with the next one, which is The Christmas Wager by Holly Cassidy. This is one that is also coming out in September or may have already been released as of the time of this filming. It says, one rivalry, eight days until Christmas, let the holiday games begin. When LA-based real estate developer Bella Ross arrives in the sleepy mountain town of Maple Falls, she has one mission, to acquire the local failing Christmas shop, Always Noel, securing the promotion of her dreams. Nothing can get in her way except the shop's owner, stubborn grandson, Jesse Harrison. Both refuse to budge until an unlikely wager is struck. Bella and Jesse will compete in the Maple Falls holiday games, an annual tradition of eccentric feats of strength and skills. Winner decides the selling price. They'll give each other a run for their money, but as the competition heats up, Bella and Jesse's icy feelings towards each other begin to thaw. It will take a Christmas miracle for them to admit there's a spark, but what if it's just another game? So this is definitely more on the hate to love side. Again, really sweet, really cute, and that comes out this month in September. Another September release is The Xmas Holidays by Zoe Allison. Maya Bashir is dreading her drive home for Christmas and having to explain that she's just left her high paying job in a long term relationship, so a brief detour to her friend's festive party doesn't seem like such a bad idea until Maya walks in to find the last person she wants to see Sam, the boy who broke her heart eight years ago, and he's serving drinks naked. Sam Holland is working an extra job on the slide to help his friend get by, but little did he expect Maya Bashir to come barreling back into his life, learning about his secret side hustle and taking back her old job alongside him at his daytime role as a ski instructor on the slopes of the Scottish Highlands. As both Sam and Maya realized that their reason for heartbreak so many years ago wasn't entirely as it seemed, they must learn to stand up for what they want the most or else miss their second chance at love. So I can't say for sure, but it sounds like there could be some miscommunication involved in here, which is not my favorite, but we do have a second chance romance this time, which sounds like it could be a good fun time. This next one is another September release, and I'm gonna be honest, it caught my eye purely for the covers and the dogs. It's called Unleashed Holiday by Victoria Shade. Chelsea Higgins is doing just fine. She's heading into the holidays at the helm of a thriving dog training business, and she's got a mellow senior dog at home to keep her warm at the end of the day. What more could she need? Enter certified gym bro, Andrew, Chelsea's former nemesis, and now the newest neighbor in her business complex, who also wants to expand into the vacant spot Chelsea's been eyeing for months. Who cares if it's the season of joy? Let the turf war begin. When an unfortunate and literal run-in with Andrew's lawless dog leaves Chelsea with a bum wrist, the two strike a bargain. Andrew will help Chelsea rehab the injury if she'll work with him to train his adorably uncivilized boxer. Oh, I've had an adorably uncivilized boxer. That's so cute. Their typical bickering soon turns to bantering and Chelsea finds herself inexplicably drawn to the man she thought she had nothing in common with. As she gets to know Andrew and his parents, she realizes she needs to refocus on her own family, especially with a milestone Christmas speeding toward them. But Chelsea can't help wondering if she and Andrew are training for keeps or if this unexpected Christmas gift is just too good to be true. So I love the whole dog aspect to it. This sounds ridiculously charming and this is certainly one that is on my radar. Another September release was You Make It Feel Like Christmas by Tony Shiloh. This says Star Lewis reluctantly returns home for the holidays, jobless, single, and not at all prepared to be dragged into her sister's wedding activities or to witness her sister's marriage to Star's ex-boyfriend on Christmas Eve. But when her brother's charming best friend Waylon Emerson attends their family Thanksgiving, Star begins to believe that maybe coming home isn't so bad. As Star endures wedding preparations, she takes comfort in Waylon's presence and finds the perfect distraction in helping him keep his late mother's Christmas shop afloat. As the spark between them grows, Star must decide what she wants out of life, go back to New York City or to stay and pursue a new dream. A joyous, heartwarming, and magical holiday romance from Christie award-winning author Tony Shiloh that will keep you cozy under the twinkling Christmas lights. This is another one that I believe has already been released and should be available for you to purchase. One that's coming out on September 26th is Love Holly by Emily Stone. I recently read an Emily Stone for a Christmas in July reading vlog and I really enjoyed it. It was harder hitting and I think that's kind of what she gravitates towards. Ever since a car accident tore her family apart, Holly's been part of a Lonely Hearts holiday letter writing club. Each December she writes to a stranger who is also spending Christmas alone and receives a letter from another lonely person in return. Usually the letters go unanswered. That's the point. The letters are anonymous and the senders write whatever is in their heart. But this year the letter Holly receives is different. Not only is the letter full of a grief she knows all too well, but its writer Emma mentions a place that Holly has visited. When she realizes that she might actually be able to find the letter's author, Holly becomes determined to reunite Emma with the estranged grandson Jack, with whom Emma is desperate to reconnect. When Holly finally tracks him down, she remembers that she's met Jack once before, and the connection was electric. The spark between the two of them is still there, until a misunderstanding risks their burgeoning romance and his strained relationship with Emma too. But Holly is determined if she can fix Emma's family, she might also be able to fix her own. Though as it turns out, Holly might have less time to put things right than she thought. So we definitely have a lot of harder hitting undertones here. It also sounds like we could have some miscommunication, which again, I do not love, but I'm kind of willing to trust Emily Stone with this one. And it just sounds like it's going to be beautiful. We have some lonely people at Christmas who are trying to comfort each other. We have an older lady who is deep in her grief and who misses her grandson. 
on and our main character is desperately going to try to reunite them and I just think that sounds so very wonderful. So this is another one that I have my eye on. Next we have a new holiday romance from Tessa Bailey called Wreck the Halls. This is scheduled to release on October 3rd and it says a sexy hilarious standalone rom-com about the adult children of two former rock stars who team up to convince their estranged mothers to play a Christmas Eve concert. That just sounds like a fun festive rom-com. Pretty much what you would expect from Tessa Bailey at this point. I did read I think it was called Window Shopping by her last year and I actually enjoyed that. I've enjoyed a couple of Tessa Bailey's books in the past so if you are a fan of hers just know she has a new holiday romance coming out on the 3rd of October. Another October 3rd release is Snowed In for Christmas by Jacqueline Snow. It says sorority mom Becca Fairfield is used to guys not taking her seriously. She's too blonde, too quirky, or just too much. So she's ditched dating to focus on her job and house filled with drama and plenty of tea. Now with the holidays and a major blizzard on her doorstep, Becca has everything she needs to survive the next two weeks on her own. Hot cocoa, plenty of books, and the memory of a steamy kiss with a certain sexy grumpasaurus next door neighbor to keep her warm. Another grump and sunshine. Only Becca's seriously underestimated this snowpocalypse. So when the power goes out and Harrison Cooper, football coach, master crank, and the guy who acted mega awkward after said steamy kiss offers her shelter, it only makes sense to accept. They'll just be blizzard buddies, hang out, stay safe, and maybe indulge in a little R-rated cuddling. Becca knows that Harrison isn't the dating kind, and what happens during the snowstorm lasts only as long as the storm. But are they keeping warm or are they playing with fire? So this is definitely a forced proximity, grumpy sunshine. This has got a lot of some of my favorite romance tropes, so this sounds like something that I might want to check out. Another October 3rd release is The Trouble with Tinsel by Juliet and Keith Giglio, I believe is how you pronounce their last name. It seems like this is a married couple writing the story. What can be more magical than a Hollywood Christmas? A few years after they broke up professionally and personally, the ex-screenwriting team of Carrie Williams and John Romano find their lives turned upside down when an old script is greenlit and they have to write together again. Now for the month of December, Carrie must leave behind her life as a teacher in Brooklyn to return to sunny Hollywood and work with the man she used to love. John and Carrie just want to finish the film and get this awkward reunion over with, but Amari Rivers, the star of their movie, thinks they're engaged and wants them on set for moral support and love advice. Wanting to keep the star happy, Carrie and John pretend to love each other, bringing back all the old feelings they've been trying so hard to forget. Could this be the Christmas they finally get their own happy ending? So we definitely have like a second chance romance going on here. Also like a fake dating thing, but fake dating between two exes, which is really interesting as well. When I read the synopsis of this, I just really kind of like the vibes I was getting for it. It's not getting the best reviews at the moment, but like I said, this is coming out on the third. And if it sounds interesting to you, feel free to check it out. Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone are once again pairing up to write a Christmas book. They wrote A Merry Little Meet Cute, which I do have on my shelves and I haven't actually read, but it sounds like this is going to be number two in their Christmas Notch series. This one is coming out on October 10th. It says Callum Lieberman is the funny one. As the arguably less of the three former members of the boy band Inc., he enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame and then moved home where he opened a regional piece of chain called Sly Slice Baby. He's living his best dad bod life, hooking up with bridesmaids at all his friends' weddings. After an old one-off sex tape is leaked and quickly goes viral, Callum decides he's ready to step into the spotlight again, starring in a sexy Santa biopic for the Hope Channel. Winnie Baker did everything right. She married her childhood sweetheart, avoided the downfalls of adolescent stardom, and transitioned into a stable adult acting career. Hell, she even waited until marriage to have sex. But after her perfect life falls apart, Winnie is ready to redefine herself, and what better way than a steamier than a steaming hot mug of cider Christmas movie? With decade-old Hollywood history between them, Winnie and Callum are both feeling hesitant about their new situation as co-stars, especially Winnie who can't seem to fake on-screen pleasure she's never experienced in real life. She's willing to do the pleasure research for science and artistic authenticity, of course. And there's no better research partner than her bridesmaid sex tape Hall of Fame co-star Callum. But suddenly Callum's teenage crush on Winnie is bubbling to the surface and Winnie might be catching feelings herself. So that actually sounds really cute. Like I said, I have the first book on my shelves over here. I read the first chapter in like a try chapter series that I was doing for Vlogmas last year and I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with that first chapter and it made me want to keep it. And so that's why I do still have it. And if I enjoy that, I would definitely be willing to pick this one up because this one sounds hilarious. It sounds like it's going to be cute, but also steamy at the same time. And I'm here for it. Next, we actually have a sapphic holiday romance coming out on October 17th. The book is called It's a Fabulous Life by Kelly Farmer. After years of putting aside her dreams of travel and adventure, Bailey George is ready to leave Lanford Falls and her responsibilities behind on a long awaited vacation to New York City. But when the volunteer who took over her leadership position for the town's Winter Wonderfest has a medical emergency, Bailey finds herself stuck in Lanford Falls. She gets roped into reassuming her old role, not wanting to let the town or her friends and family down. Staying home seems slightly less terrible when Bailey runs into her high school crush, Maria Hatcher. A kiss they shared years ago in the town's mistletoe grove was a life defining moment for them both. Maria quickly offers to pitch in and help with Winter Wonderfest. Her sunny disposition and holiday cheer perk up Bailey's grinchy feelings about everything. So we have a grumpin sunshine sapphic romance going on. However, one disaster after another snowball on the day of the festival. Bailey's frustration boils over and she ends up on the town's old wooden bridge. There she meets fabulous drag queen Clara Angel. Bailey declares that she wishes she hadn't been born in this Christmas obsessed suffocating 
suffocating small town. With a little of the magic Clara possesses, she shows Bailey how wrong she is about Lanford Falls and her place in it. And with a little hope and some true holiday spirit, there is a way to attain all of her dreams. So this is definitely a play on It's a Wonderful Life. I assume we're going to watch Bailey like learn why she should love her town and how good she has it. And it's just going to be very uplifting type of story. So again, a cute grump and sunshine sapphic take on It's a Wonderful Life coming out on October 17th. Another book written by a husband and wife duo is Emergency Contact by Lauren Lane and Anthony Ladone. I actually really like the synopsis of this one. This definitely sounds like a lot of fun. It says Catherine, an ambitious NYC attorney, gets diagnosed with a concussion and must be monitored for 48 hours to make sure it doesn't get worse. Unfortunately, she forgot to update her emergency contact, so the person they call is her ex-husband, Tom. Unable to be left alone, Catherine reluctantly agrees to travel to Chicago with Tom for the holidays, but thanks to a blizzard, what should have been a quick plane ride turns into an antagonistic overnight misadventure that stirs up old feelings even as Tom prepares to propose to his girlfriend on Christmas Eve. Okay, so we definitely have some complications going on there as our main character is stuck with her ex-husband for the holiday seasons. I wonder if this is going to be a second chance romance or maybe it's going to go in a different direction. I don't know, but I just, there's something about the synopsis of this that really worked for me. This one comes out on October 24th and I might just keep my eye out on it. Although I probably don't need to be adding holiday romances to my TBR at this point, but some of these just sound like perfect vibes for the holiday season. Oddly enough, we have a Christmas romance coming out on Halloween. It's called It Happened When Christmas by Chantel Gerton. Zoe Andrews lives and breathes Christmas. She loves everything about the season and after years of directing countless holiday movies, she certainly knows her way around a festive tale. So when she finally gets the chance to bring her own script to life, she isn't about to let anything or anyone stand in her way. Not even the stupidly sexy, utterly frustrating, plaid-clad tree farmer Benoit Deschamps. Ooh, we've got a lumber sexual going on in here. I'm about that. Moonlighting as mayor of Chelsea, the cozy Quebec hamlet at the center of Zoe's screenplay, Ben maddeningly refuses to grant her a film permit in his enchanting town. With just four days left before Christmas, Zoe must change Ben's mind, but not before an unscripted ice storm leaves them stranded in the middle of nowhere with nothing except each other. Will Ben's chilly resolve shatter Zoe's Christmas movie wish, or will Zoe be able to melt his stubbornness and maybe even his heart? So again, we've got some great tropes here. We've got another grumpy sunshine. We've got another forced proximity. We've got some lumber sexual action, it seems, going on in here. And I just think, again, this sounds really, really cute. So a Christmas read on Halloween day. On November 9th, we have yet another Christmas story coming out from Jenny Bayless. Jenny Bayless is a name that I see quite frequently when I'm looking for holiday stories. It seems like she has released quite a bit. I do have at least one on my shelf that I have not yet read. This one is called A December to Remember. And like I said, it's coming out on November 9th. Wildly different half sisters, Maggie, Simone, and Star have hardly seen one another since their sprightly summers at Rowan Thorpe, their eccentric father, Augustus's home. Known for his bustling approach to the knickknack shop he ran, Augustus was loved by all and known by none, not even his daughters. Now years later, the three estranged women are called upon for the reading of Augustus's will and quickly realize he's orchestrated a series of hoops through which they must jump to unlock their inheritance. The last thing any of them want to do, but Maggie and Star desperately need the money and who would Simone be to resist? Through hilarious goose chases, small town mishaps, and one heartwarming winter solstice celebration, love is in the air if only the three sisters can let themselves grasp it. I haven't read it, but I do have a book on my shelves called The Christmas Sisters, and it kind of seems like it's along the same lines, only on a more serious nature. So if you love like harder hitting family drama, you might like that one, or you might even like this one as well. Again, this one's coming out on the 9th. This next one seems like it's going to be more on the serious side, more like Hallmark movie-esque. It's called A Wish for Christmas by Courtney Cole. It says, two weeks till Christmas, Noel Blake is not in a great place. After several years of marriage, she and her husband Jonah are quietly drifting apart. The only time they really talk at all anymore is when they walk their dog, Elliot, and even then it usually ends in bickering. When one snowy day Elliot manages to slip his leash, they find him blocks away in the care of a mysterious old man who asks them to make a wish on an old snow globe. Eager to get their dog safely home, they agree to a strange request. Neither one realizes that the wish they're about to make will change the course of their lives, possibly forever. When Noel and Jonah wake up the next morning, they're in separate beds, separate apartments, separate lives, but are they any happier? As they live the existence they'd always wish for, both feel that something very important is missing. And when a chance encounter brings the pair back together, they find they have a spark of something very special. Will they be able to find their way back to each other before it's too late? Or does the Christmas magic have another fate in store? So yes, definitely very Hallmark-esque. And I love the fact that this is exploring a relationship between a married couple. I always love those kinds of stories because I feel like a marriage is like one of the most complicated relationships that you could ever have with another person. And I love books that explore that. And it seems like this is just going to be very poignant and harder hitting. So I actually really love the sound of this one. And it's certainly going on my TBR. All right. And I think the last one that I want to talk to you about today is called The Holiday Mix-Up. It comes out on the 10th. It's by Ginny Beard. And this sounds like it's going to be a take on While You Were Sleeping, which sounds absolutely fantastic. Lonely hearted waitress Katie Smith has nowhere to go for Christmas and a huge crush on her gorgeous diner patron Juan Martinez. So when Juan asks Katie to pose as his girlfriend for holiday festivities at his family's winery, Katie leaps at the chance. That is, until an accident lands Juan in a coma right after giving his folks the news. Katie knows she should tell the Martinez's the truth. 
truth. But when they immediately embrace her, Katie is reluctant to let her fantasy of a family holiday go. And then there's Juan's brother, Mateo, whose smile tugs at her heartstrings just right and who tells her perfect Juan might not be everything he seems. Second son, Mateo Martinez, loves his brother, but Juan's plan to rebrand and expand Los Cielos Cellars has cost their family too much and put its entire tradition in jeopardy. Katie seems to understand, but she's still committed to Juan, even when Mateo starts to wish her gentle heart and beautiful smile were committed to him instead. With the winery at stake, secrets on all sides, and Juan due to wake up any day, can Katie and Mateo follow their hearts to a Christmas miracle, or will this mix-up ruin their chances? So, I don't know. There's just something about that that I'm really vibing with, so this is another one that I think could be on my radar for any time I need a holiday romance. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are some of the holiday romances or just holiday reads that are coming out or have come out. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, please go ahead and, of course, leave me some kind of Christmas emoji, maybe a Christmas tree, Christmas wreath, some mistletoe, whatever Christmas emojis are available to you. If you do love a good holiday romance, please comment down below some of your favorite holiday romances so that we can go check them out. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would love to see you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms. I always leave links to my Goodreads Instagram and IG threads down below if you would love to chat there because you know I love connecting with you. But until next time, y'all, bye.